this is Glenn Irvin, and this is a description of how I utilize Minecraft EDU in my Spanish classroom. The combination of using this software and using my Gente Nivel Basico to create something called simulations. This relates to how I believe people learn. I have a mashup theory which I've combined experiential learning and mastery learning. And I've written a description here about what that actually entails. I put here that true learning occurs in an environment where students are given the opportunity to make decisions, problem solve, and then finally, of course, reflect upon those experiences. Um, and then I also believe as far as the mastery part where that learning can't be constrained by time, but rather each student must be given the time, opportunity to be able to learn from their failures. So what exactly is Minecraft EDU? As their website will say, um, they provide products and services that basically make it very easy for any teacher to use Minecraft in the classroom. It's not that you couldn't just make your own servers or just use the regular Minecraft version at a school. This is just so easy to go ahead and work. Once you've applied or downloaded the software, um, you will have access to this server onto a regular desktop computer. I didn't have to do anything to this server except set up some parameters. So I gave it some information as far as some settings that I wanted, this one being creative world, but I can change it to survival or anything else I wanted to go ahead and do. Um, I can allow for or not allow certain things like fire or monsters or anything else. Um, and then I can also manage the, the student settings here. I can mute students um, if uh, I don't want them to be able to chat. I can freeze all of them so I can get all their attention. Um, I can allow for things like keeping their own inventory. All these things are at just a click of a button. This is basically the server menu here. As a teacher inside the game, I will show you what that looks like. Um, inside the game, it's actually really easy also to manage um, and, and to be able to give students things, be able to free students, be able to go from one student to another. Here's a student world that uh, I think we we're building a couple of arenas. This is a high ally arena, um, and I think they were building a bullfighting stadium over here on this side. Um, and anyway, as students are building, I can check up on them by going to the teacher menu, which is this menu here. This doesn't exist under regular Minecraft, but Minecraft EU allows basically for me to go into uh, each one of these kinds of settings. I can put myself in creative mode, even though uh, the students may not be in creative mode. I can set up assignments. Here I can manage students just from one click of a button, kind of on my other screen, but now I can just manage them from right here. I can get, search for specific players um, and teleport myself to players. As it says up here, I can teleport students to my location. I can teleport myself to their location to kind of check up on see what they're actually doing. Um, I can give assignments. I can add an assignment, assignment title. Those will appear for all of the students. It'll give them a description of what I want them to go ahead and do. Of course, I can give items to all students or to specific students. It could be like in my commerce game where I give emeralds out, or it could just be specific items that uh, I want a, cer a certain student or all students to have. Um, and then finally, there's this really cool mode, which is called build mode. And if you've ever played Minecraft, uh, one of the things that can be frustrating is just the amount of time it takes to build things. And this build mode basically lets you kind of cheat uh, as far as a teacher to be able to build things very quickly. As you'll notice here, I'm building, I'm just setting one block down and then setting one block there and it's called fill mode. And basically with fill mode, I can make, create buildings very, very quickly. As you see, I just created a giant block here. Otherwise, in regular Minecraft, you have to set one block up at a time. So to create a big building will not take you very long, very much time. And uh, I've found this to be very, very useful as far as just creating a certain base or a certain area that I want them to go ahead and play in, clear out areas. Um, and it, again, it's just very, very easy to go ahead and use. So I'm going to run you through a couple of the simulation games that I had my students participate in. The first one was called El Mundo de Comercio, or just the World of Commerce. And it was for Chapter 18. And Chapter 18 basically described vocabulary that related to businesses. Um, so what was my objective? Create a successful business while communicating solely in Spanish with their classmates.
And so they had to decide what kind of career they were going to undertake. They could work by themselves or they could work with teams. Everyone started off with different types of supplies depending upon their career. We had different types of currency that we were able to trade with each other. I had a main store that I sold things at a very high price because I wanted to encourage them to trade with each other, to barter, to communicate with each other so that they could encourage, they could seek out better prices on items. The game end goal, of course, was just to make the most money. But really, the biggest goals were uh, the grading goals. How did I grade them? First of all, the 50% of their grade came from their attempt to run a business by working hard at their trade working to sell and buy items from their classmates, okay, and then just having a positive attitude, of course. 50% of their grade came from speaking and writing completely in the Spanish language during the simulation. Uh, any English speaking would, would result in a grade reduction. Even typing in the Minecraft world, uh, I discourage that also. So if they did have questions that related to how to do certain things in Minecraft, I asked them to go ahead and raise their hand. And I would say if they could do that, they, then I would actually answer the questions in English. In English. Um, then we went through and created a document in Google Docs that we, I started it by creating a couple of questions. Uh, ¿Cuánto cuesta? How much does it cost? Necesito. I need. Te doy. I will give you. Um, some different types of statements and questions to be able to communicate inside of the world. Of course, we needed Minecraft related vocabulary, which we already knew some of them, uh, like words like wood and stone, um, sand or iron or gold, all those kinds of things. Um, and of course, with food, cows, steaks, um, all those kinds of uh, items for food. Um, and then I started it by creating a pricing list in my store and, and uh, had a store there that um, I will show you in just a bit. Um, and I have sold items through there. Um, Minecraft DDU makes it super easy that once students uh, gave me or sold me items, they could sell me items and then I would give them emeralds for those items um, that I could quickly just be able to press a button and say, okay, I, this student needs three emeralds or needs one emerald. Um, and then that would go right into their inventory without having it be a big mess. Uh, very, very quickly, very easy to be able to manage. And then in the end, we took pictures of our, we did uh, screenshots of our inventory to determine who was the actual winner of the game. The second simulation that I created was based on a chapter in our book that asked the students to formulate opinions on global issues. It was called Gente que opina. The world was originally created by Joel Levin as a way to balance the concerns of conservation with the demands of the technological progress. I then adapted the world to fit the vocabulary and central outcomes of the chapter in Spanish class. This world starts off in a bunker, as you can see, and the background story tells the players that they've been asleep for over 200 years after the ice caps have melted and raised sea levels, ultimately devastating all life on the planet. Here you can see that I've included even a YouTube link that uh, guided the players with some more specific directions. The players basically must read and comprehend all of the clues in written in Spanish, of course, left behind to figure out the multiple objectives of the simulation. The players figure out that they first must regreen the earth by cultivating and planting trees on the surface. There is a secondary goal, which is to produce large amounts of iron in order to build a signal rocket that will contact the humans who are living in space to let them know that it is safe now to come back down to earth. However, of course, these goals are in conflict with each other. There is no coal in this particular world, and the only way to smelt the iron is to burn the trees that the students are trying to replant. The students must communicate in the Spanish language and, of course, collaborate in order to fulfill both goals. Students can contribute in all kinds of different ways. They can plant and harvest trees. Other students can seek out iron and that will be smelted to create the iron blocks needed for that signal rocket you can see there in the screen. That's a science station right there, which gave us several clues, gives the students several clues on what their ultimate objectives are. As you climb into this science station, as you can see here, they're going to go in there. You can see, oh, the world here, just barren. There's no trees, um, and there will need to be a hundred trees before the other humans can come back down to the earth. As they come down here, you can see they're going to read, Someone's Logged the Last Person on Earth. This is Dr. Eleanor Collins, 
and I put it there and I put it in Espanol now in Spanish basically that uh, you have been asleep for 200 years to give them all the information about what they need to go ahead and do um, as far as getting the iron um, and then also telling them that there's no coal in the world um, and then ultimately I also said hey but there is one more tree basically left on earth which you will need to cultivate that tree to plant other trees and what's cool as far as a Minecraft is concerned um, if you get uh, if you go onto a, a hit the leaves of a, of a tree um, it will give you seedlings which then you can go ahead and plant uh, to make other trees and that's basically the objective here you're gonna climb down this little shaft here and then head down and find that last tree um, the students were asked to work on the simulation for about 40 minutes each day. Then they wrote in their disaster journals in Spanish about how they were feeling about the progress they were making. I asked them to put themselves in the scenario and pretend, you know, that they were the last people on earth. How would they feel? What would be their fears? I asked them about their relationships with their classmates and how they felt about how their leaders were actually doing. Some final thoughts and reflections. Um, I actually asked the students to go ahead and let me know what they thought about participating in these simulations and use just using Minecraft in the Spanish classroom. These were my Spanish three students, all seniors. Um, some of them had used Minecraft itself as far as playing the game itself. Uh, some of them had never even played the game. Um, so their thoughts were very interesting and let me share them with you. Um, here are some of the thoughts that I've pulled out of their reflections that they wrote. Um, my favorite chapter was the business units. I really loved the Minecraft business simulation. Not only was it fun, but I learned a lot and communicated uh, much more with my classmates in Spanish because I needed to. I thought that was awesome. Um, just that they needed to communicate in order to fulfill their objectives. Uh, next one it said my favorite chapter in Spanish 3 was the business unit I plan on majoring in business and even though we were playing in a game it felt like real life we needed to communicate trade buy sell items and make the most for our company make the most money for our company uh, I learned a ton about communicating working together and the business world which I thought was again amazing uh, my favorite chapters were the ones that included Minecraft I really enjoyed the chapter where we had to work together to survive and save the world the uh, Aconcagua one. I thought that Minecraft was a good way to put our vocab to the test. It's very simple. It's is, is awesome way of describing it. And then the last one says, one of the greatest perks of taking this class was introduction to virtual learning through Minecraft. Uh, I thought that was great. I had never played Minecraft before this class because I didn't get the point. Not only did I learn how to play, but I learned how to interact with others in a virtual world. So how many people can say that about a class they took in high school? So overall, uh, great um, reflections here as far as from the students. Uh, I also thought just in general that this being the first time that we had, I had ever tried this, um, it turned out wonderful. So if you're going to try something as far as in your class, I would highly recommend Minecraft EDU. It adapts well easily to almost any topic um, that you can think of. Thank you very much for your attention. Adios.